In this video, I'm going to show you how you could build a classification model for the digits data set using scikit-learn. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. All right, so now fire up the Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab of the digits classification model notebook. And let's firstly connect to the notebook. All right, and so here we're gonna import the libraries and we're importing the matplotlib pyplot as PLT. And also we're going to import the dataset module from scikit-learn. And now we're going to load in the dataset of the digits dataset. Okay, load and clear all outputs. And so the digits dataset will comprise of the data, comprise of the images, and it will comprise of the target and also the target names. Okay, and so the target will be kind of like the Y variable and the data will be like the x variables and images is the precursor to the x variable. So we have to convert images into a form that is pre-processed before it can become a data here. So the data here will then serve as the image x variable. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how you could do that, how you could take a image array in order to make it into a pre-processed form, which would serve as the x variable together with the target y variable to make a prediction. And after the prediction has been made, the label is shown here in the target names, okay? And so target y is the actual value for each of the image inputs, okay? So let me show you the shape of the image dimension. So digits.images has a dimension of eight by eight. And so we're gonna start with the image, okay? So images, data, it has a dimension of eight by eight, and we have 1,797 images, okay? And so let's visualize the data sets. So here we use the matplotlib to perform visualization of the data sets, and we're using a for loop, and we're looping through three different variables, okay? And so we're looping first through the axes of the matplotlib plots, and we're also looping through the digits.images data, and then also through the digits.target, okay? And so digits.images is the input image and digits.target is the label that are assigned to each image. Okay, so each of these are coming from digits.images and the label here is shown at the top that you see zero, one, two, three. It comes from the digits.target, okay? And here we specify access to set access off. So you won't see the box that will normally be around the plot. So if I take that off, let's have a look, then you're going to see that each image plot will have a box plot here around it. Okay, so we're going to hide it by using this option, access to be off. And then here we set the title so that the title will specify training and then it will specify the label, okay, which is shown here at the top. All right, and now we're going to take the images data, digits.images right here, shown here also. And now we're going to examine the labels, the digits.target. Okay, shown here. All right, and now we're gonna perform pre-processing of the digits.images data. And so we're gonna perform the following. So here we're gonna use pandas as PD in order to allow you to see the pre-processed data. And then we're going to create a variable called nSamples in order to allow us to get the length of the digits image. So it will get 1797, right? Because the length will be the number of rows or the number of images that it has. And then we're gonna create a data variable which will perform the reshaping of the image. And the input argument will be the number of samples, right? The number of samples is 1797. Let's do that. And essentially what it will do is it will reshape the data or it will flatten the image, okay? And now before, do you recall that the dimension of the image is 1797? times eight times eight, okay? And after flattening the image, it will become 64, right? So eight by eight will be multiplied to get 64. So here we get 64 columns, right? Because you have an eight by eight data matrix. And then if you flatten it out, you will get 64 and it will become in one line, right? So essentially you have a three dimensional data. You have 1797 by eight by eight. And then you're essentially taking a eight by eight matrix, an eight by eight matrix. And so line by line, you're taking each line and you're stacking it side by side. So instead of being an eight by eight, it will become an eight by one, okay? And therefore it will have 64, 
because we have eight on each layer. And when we take layer one and two, when we stack it, we get eight plus eight, which is 16. And another eight will be 24, another eight will be 32. And because we have eight, eight of them lined up, it will be 64, all right? And now let's see the shape of the before and after, okay? So before it is eight by eight, and then after it is 64. So we have already flattened the image. Let's show the data frame, 64 columns, okay? So notice that the digits.data is the flattened version, and it's essentially the same thing that we have generated here in the data variable, okay? So data is the one that we have generated from using the reshape function, and the digits.data is the pre-generated version that it has already done and is available from the digits data set by default. But then we did it again by using the digits.images data. All right, and so we're gonna perform data splitting now. We're gonna take in the, the pre-processed data and then we're gonna take in the digits.target, which is the Y, and the data will be the X. Okay, and so we're gonna perform a 50-50 split. So half will go into training and half will go into testing sets. So we're gonna build models for support vector machine and we're gonna build a random forest classifier. And so we have generated the model into the SVM variable and the random forest into the RF variable. Okay, so now we're gonna apply the two models, the SVM and the RF to make a prediction on the testing sets. And then we're gonna assign it to the Y test pred SVM and also to the Y test pred RF variable. Let's run it. And now let's generate the visualization of the prediction. Okay, so the actual and the predicted will be displayed on top of one another so that you will see whether the prediction happened accurately or not. And so here, this number is number eight. Okay, and so actually it's eight and it's predicted to be eight by the support vector machine. Um, same here, 8-8, eight, eight, prediction 4-4, four, four, prediction 9-9. Nine, nine. Okay, so all of these here are accurately predicted. Let's have a look for the random forest. So random forest did almost pretty good, but then they made one error here. So it predicts number 8 to be a number 3, okay, right here. Let's compare the model performance in terms of accuracy and also in terms of the Matthews correlation coefficient. And for this, we're using the accuracy score from the sklearn.metrics module. And then the input argument will be the Y test and the Y test pred SVM, and also the Y test and the Y test pred RF for the random forest. And then we're using the round function in order to round the number to three digits. And then we're printing it out. And we're doing the same here, but then making use of the Matthews correlation coefficient. And so you can see here that the random forest model performed a bit worse than the support vector machine. Let's have a look at the confusion matrix. So we're gonna, okay, so let me import the library module. So from sklearn.metrics import for the random forest as well, okay? So this is the confusion matrix for the support vector machine and also for the random forest. And I could also change the color to a cool color in the cmap function. And so this is what I get, okay? So there are other colors that you could play around with. So in order to show you what colors are available, let me intentionally make it produce an error. Okay, so all of the colors that you see here are usable, okay? Like G and BU would probably be green and blue. Okay, right here. Okay, so you could use any color that you like. Let me change it to jet, let's see. Okay, but the color, the numbers are hardly visible here. Generate the error intentionally so that you see the possible value. Let's try ocean, what is that? Okay, and so this is the ocean. All right, and so, you can see here that the diagonal will display the correct classification and the ones above and below will show the exact same information, but then it will show how it is misclassified, right? It will show how numbers that are supposed to be classified here as number five, whether it is predicted to be another number, whether it is predicted to be maybe the true value is number five, but it's predicted to be number six or number nine. 
Okay, so it also shows you the confusion made by the model. All right, and that's all. Thank you for watching until the end of this video. If you're finding value in the video, please support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, and also hit on the notification bell so that you'll be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.